Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Excited hands, excited hands, it's the gold trim. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, 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 hello. It's not even a word anymore. I'm just making a siren noise now. Hello and welcome to part eight. Yes, there is life after part six. I've not even finished the cockpit yet. Welcome to part eight of our build of the Games Workshop Space Wolves Storm Wolf brackets, a Stormfang variant brackets assault ship thing. Yeah, not a gunship, not a gunship. Hello, welcome. Yes, right. If you remember in the last episode, we applied the gunkiness uh, with the enamel panel line wash. That now dried, and I've gone ahead and done a matte varnish. Now, I didn't show the matte varnishing because I had to run outside between rainstorms, take advantage of it not actually raining for once in the first time in weeks, and get it done. So, uh, if you want to know how I did it, and I'll show you what I used, uh, if you want to know how I did it, go onto my YouTube main channel page go into playlists because I put all my stuff in playlists I'm not a jerk that just leaves videos lying around making it impossible to follow on to the next episode everything is in playlists go and have a look I think it's the how to playlist uh, and there should be one in there about how to uh, spray rattle can matte varnish or just do a search on the page for rattle can or matte varnish or you know something like that it's on there you'll find it uh, and it will take you will show you how I spray Humbrol acrylic varnish matte 49 now I know this is overexposed apologies like I said before it's the price you pay for being able to see everything else uh, this is my absolute favorite varnish in the entire universe because it's easy it's a rattle cam it gives me no problems at all and it requires no brain to put on um, if you're gonna get this yourself make sure it says varnish matte 49 and acrylic if it's enamel don't use it it will mess up your acrylic paint if it says satin, don't use it, it's not very good. If it says gloss, don't even think about buying it because it's cac. There's only very few Humbrol products I would ever recommend. One of them is this, Humbrol Matte 49 in a rattle can, uh, and the other is Mascol. I can't think of any other Humbrol products right now that I would actually recommend you spend money on. Don't even buy the non-rattle can version of this varnish, it's terrible. The gloss varnish in bottle and spray and the matte varnish in bottle, just awful stuff, doesn't work, it's pants. Yeah, Humbrol, Matt 49. Go and find that video, how to use rattle can. I can't remember what it's called now. I'll put a thing up here anyway. It might pop up at the right time. I don't know why I didn't think of that. That shows you how I did it. Uh, but that has now been done. And as you can see, it's not 100% matte. It's still got a bit of sort of life to it. Now, there's a very good reason for that. And that's because my airbrush was bust. I didn't know. And I put too much gloss varnish on. So I'd have to actually put a lot of matte varnish on here to make it completely matte. Now, I've got about three coats of it on here, and you do apply it lightly, but I'm reticent to go any further because the more sort of layers of varnish you put on, be it matte or gloss, the more things get softened and little details in your paint job get hidden and it just, it hides things that the shading where the enamel panel line wash went will just get faded. So I didn't want to do that. And I say it was dependent on the weather. It was starting to rain again. So I'm happy with it as it is. It's fine. It's got a little bit of machine, but it's nothing major. It still will be a contrast to the bits we do make shiny. So that's been done. What is next? Next. Excited hands, excited hands. It's the gold trim. Yes. There's a few things we need to do. First of all, we're gonna do the gold trim. Uh, we've got the space puppy head and the bits of trim and not work. All they need, they all, they all, you can tell I'm excited. I'm just talking absolutely nonsense now. They all need to be gold. So we need to go ahead and get all that brush painted on. We have to do the uh, barrels for the bolters. We have, ooh, hello. We have the Hellfrost cannons. We need to get some gold on there and we need to do all the little runes which are in the middle of the barrel. There's also runes all over the ship. You can see all over the place. I don't know where they are. I can't see them because it's dark from my point of view, but they're somewhere all over the place. Uh, we've got details on the Hellfrost cannon up there. We have to bring some life back to the metallics, which are now looking a bit duller. We need to bring some bling back to those on the edges. We have to get the cockpit all painted up and bring some life back to these cannons. Um, and then once that's done, get the sponsons on. Once that's done, that's kind of it for the ship. The ship will be done. 
all that's left to do then, I said all, for about six episodes, uh, we've got to paint the motorbike uh, and get the dude on there. And we've got to, or I've got to figure out what I'm doing with base. Either get a base made, as in get the fly base that comes with the kit and do something with it, or build a small diorama. Now, it, it sounds like it should be an obvious choice. Given the choice, I'd do a small diorama and use the flyer base bit and put that in the diorama. The problem is I've only got one flyer base, the one that comes with the kit. This is a scrap one that I use for when I'm painting. I've only got one flyer base, and if I put it in a diorama, I can't then put it in a, I can't then offer the, the buyer of this a flyer base as well. And if I do it in a diorama, actually packing a diorama to send it off to someone if they buy this, I, without everything falling off, you've got to think, hang on, what if the guy turns it upside down and it all, so actually packing a diorama is a bit of a logistical nightmare. I don't even know how I'd do it. So I've not decided yet if I'm going to do the flyer base or a diorama. I will have a think about it. I've got some bits to do a diorama, so we'll, we'll see. So the bike and the diorama, and then everything would be done then. So let's get cracking with this. I don't know how much we'll get done in this episode. We might get it all done. We might. Um, I don't think I'm going to do any more weathering. I'm quite happy with where it is right now. I would debate whether to do some streaking, but I don't think it needs it. I think the enamel wash that we did gives it enough little bits of streaks here and there. Um, so I'll get everything ready for the gold trim. We'll do as much as we can in this episode. Oh, we've also got all the little adornments to paint, the chains with the bits on and the shield that goes on the front. So let's go and uh, I'll go and get the gold ready and we'll do as much as we can in this episode. If I actually stop talking a bit, talk less then you know, that would also mean we can get more in the episode. So I'll go and get everything ready and we'll start with the gold. Yes, I love doing the gold. <laughs> excited hands, excited hands, excited hands. Okay, so let's get started. So we're going to do the gold in exactly the same way we did it on the figures. So we're going to start off with some Retributor Armor, which is my favourite gold colour. I've got some on my wet palette. For this, I'm going to use two brushes. I'm going to use my base brush that's got the little hook on the end because I love that brush now. Uh, my Windsor & Newton double O, and if I need to, I'll use my Windsor & Windsor and Newton triple O as well, my Series 7, just for the really small bits of knot work. So what we're going to do, we need to get all this trim here, and the head there, all these bits on the top and around the edge, and there's some of the bits like around the, the, the uh, gemstones or jewels, whatever you want to call them, and some bits of trim. So I've got some uh, paint on my wet palette, I'm just going to get a little tiny bit of water. As always, add a little water to your paint to thin it, and we just not start doing it again, talking nonsense. We just need to crack on. So, go in, as always, go slowly, and don't worry if it doesn't go on too thickly, like right now, you might still see the first coat, you might still see some of the blue underneath. Just go ahead and do a second coat if you need to. I'm not going to say it, I'm not going to say it, I'm not going to say it, but go ahead and do a couple of coats. Uh, and be very careful around the edges when you get to the bit where the, the blue paint is, like around here. Go carefully. Right now, your focus is just to get the whole thing covered. This is so exciting. I'm loving this. I've oh, been waiting to paint this bit. Okay, and with the gold all added, you can see what kind of difference it makes now. It just looks fantabulous darling so we've got some on the ends of the wings the knot work on the wings and on the top little bits for the jewels and the markings uh, and we've of course got the space puppy on either side i'm really happy with how that's come out it's come out beautifully now i would be happy to leave it like that but we want to give it some definition it's a bit it's a bit flat it's beautifully shiny but it's a bit flat so like we did with the goals before we're going to go in with some Reitland flesh shade and again, as always, with any shade, this is just going to go all over the gold parts. Don't need to be particularly careful. Just be careful around when you get to the edge between the gold and the blue. You want it to go kind of on the edge. You want to work it around the outer edges, like here, just so it puts a bit of shade between the gold and the blue. Because there will be little bits where I've missed the paint. I've not got on perfectly. But that's fine, as we explained in an earlier episode shades can cover everything so we'll work our way around and we'll just make sure we get a nice even coat all over the gold parts okay and if you remember from the gold last time we did it this gold looks now a lot more bronzy and brassy 
so it's time to bring back the bling and for that we have some auric armor gold uh, and this is just going to bring it back quite nice so i've got it thinned down with a little bit of water a little tiny touch of water which i'm just getting from my pot using my double o windsor and newton series 7 and all we're going to do is paint the gold just on the raised areas not in the recesses so like for example on the tips of these tufts of fur here but we're not going to go into all the deep recesses so i just need to go around all the gold and paint all the raised surfaces leaving the shade in the recess. Okay, as you can see now, this is looking most spectacular. Look at that. Lots of shiny, shiny now. Uh, there was a step that came after adding the Orikama Gold, uh, which I did film, but the video didn't work. So I'll explain that to you. Once I put the Orikama Gold on there, it took about two coats to get a nice sort of thick coverage. Orikama Gold is a layer paint, but it's really quite translucent. So one coat won't really do much. You want it to really catch the light like that. So two coats was about right. Some places I had to do three coats. But that was done. When I'd done that, I got out my Rune Fang Steel. Now, Games Workshop would have you do an edge highlight where you get the brush, up, angle it, and you go along the edge of each bit. Just put that little silver line across the corner. I didn't do that because to me that looked a bit too cartoony. He says putting like bright blingy gold all over a weathered and battered ship. What I did instead was I used my base brush. That's the wrong end. Uh, to do a dry brush, but not like a normal dry brush where I load the brush up and then get most of it off on the on the tissue paper. I did do that, but instead of like dabbing the brush in and doing this with the tissue paper, I just kind of ran it along like that to get most of it off. Tested it on my finger, you can see there a little mark. So there was a little bit of paint left, and then just very gently dry brushed like around these edges. So I get the brush and do that and flick it around the edges. Not the corners of these straight pieces, but like round there, on the edges of these bits on the wings. Uh, and some of the over like the the head on this bit and for example on things like the aquila on the front there, I don't know if it'll be in focus or not uh, I put it on there it's very very subtle uh, it's more subtle than an edge highlight I just wanted a hint of that sort of sparkle that sort of silvery glint I didn't want it to be a strict edge highlight so that's what I did but if you want to do an edge highlight you can do I'm actually I actually suck at edge highlighting as well which is another reason I didn't want to do that so what's the next step? Well, that is the gold finish now. Yes, the gold is done. By the way, if my voice sounds a bit different, it says, like, um, when I filmed the last bit, that was last night, filming this bit today, in that sort of, sort of eight or nine hours, I've completely come down with a nasty cold. So I, it just kind of went, hi, I'm here, I'm visiting, nothing about it you can do. Great, thanks, thanks. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, yes, so what's the next step? The gold is on there. Um, obviously, the mo all the model is protected with matte varnish. The gold isn't. Uh, so we need to protect it. So I'm going to use some of my Pledge Floor Care Finish. Two times more shine. Two times more shine. Yes. Uh, I've got a little bottle of it here. I can smell the strawberry daiquiri. I'm going to put some in a little cup. I don't need a lot, just a little bit in a plastic uh, shot, cup, shot glass. I have one put aside just for this purpose. And I have two brushes. Small and big doesn't really matter what they are. I just use these purely for pledge. And all we're going to do is we're going to we're going to protect these with some pledge. It's also going to bring a bit of even more shine. And this is what I did on the figures. So it's going to bring even more shine, but it is going to protect them. Uh, now it's fairly easy. The only thing I'd say is be careful when you paint in big areas like this because you don't want to get it pooling up or or bulbing anywhere. So go steady. Use a slightly bigger brush like this one, perhaps, which is a bit more. Use a soft and floppy brush. This is going to be fine for most of it. This is going to be a bit easier when I'm doing here because I can just gently sort of don't overload the brush too much and just gently put it on. You will need one coat, two coats if you really want a lot of shine and a lot of protection. But all I'm going to do is quite simply get some on the brush, not a lot, just a little bit. I'm going to start brushing it on and just onto the gold parts. And I just need to get it on that. It will, you've got to be careful with it because it's such a thin liquid. It will run away from you. And you will end up gloss coating half of the model at the same time. I'm trying not to get it to run down the side of this strip. Because I don't want to get gloss on the blue part. If it does run around or it does get out of control and you get some gloss on the on the blue bit that's supposed to be matte. Don't worry. When it's dried, give it 24 hours to dry. And when it's dried, just go over that bit with some Lamian medium. Uh, and that'll matte it back down again. So all I need to do now is spend a... 
a pleasant half hour glossing all these like i say two coats might be all right you might be one might be fine if you want to be extra safe go for two doesn't do any harm but just make sure this stuff you have to leave to cure for 24 hours no matter how you apply it but if you're brushing it on just let the first coat dry for maybe an hour or so maybe two and then you can go in with your second coat because you want it to self level and that's what it does so well it self levels beautifully so you want it to self level uh, and then you can go in with the second coat so i'll go and get all this done uh doing this bit and i'm not the camera yay Okay, and with the gloss varnish now drying, uh, I need to leave it for 24 hours, so it's time to move on to something else. So while we're waiting, we may as well do the decorations that go on the on the ship itself. Now this is all black, so you can't really see it, but we've got the big shield that goes on the front, on the front door, the front ramp. Uh, and what we're going to do with this, we're going to paint it the same way I've painted these. These are two of the dangly bits that go off the side of the ship. I've painted all these up the other day because I had half an hour spare, and I'm going to use exactly the same techniques on this. That I did on these, so I didn't need to show all of you. So let me put these down somewhere safe and then we'll crack on. So, what do we have? We have a number of things on here. We have a big, fluffy, fuzzy wolf pelt. We have a, a skull that is half skull, half actual wolf head. We've got bones, bits of metal. We've got gold trim on the edge of the shield. We've got the shield. We've got some skulls uh, and we've got claws and we've got something there i think that's like rope or something i'm not sure i'll have to look at the artwork i'm not sure if that's rope going across so there's gonna be all that different colors on here so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to go in with because the majority of it's going to be the fur color uh, but we're going to go in with zandri dust and paint pretty much most of it just because the bones and the fur are all going to use zandri dust as a base color uh, the zandri dust will make the white of the shield a bit easier to paint in and it won't do any harm on the other bit. So we may as well paint most of it Zandri dust. So I'm just gonna go in and move my water out of the way because it's on the wrong side. It's right behind the camera. So I can't get near it. Oh, I'm not organized. So get some Zandri dust. I've got some on my wet palette of wet palettes. Um, we'll just start putting this on. Now, I don't need to tell you how many coats this will take. You know how many coats this will take and what, let's say, thickness of coat you should apply so i'll just get on with this you don't need me to tell you how many coats to put on yes you know how it works i'm not saying it i'm not saying it okay i forgot in the last section to show you the paint zandri dust there you go now that's now dried and there are yes indeed more than one but less than three coats of a not thick type on there yes uh, so that's all done so next we need to go in with a shade now uh, we are going to use for the bones we're going to need reichland flesh shade uh, but for the fur of the coat the pelt we are going to use agrax earth shade however it doesn't really matter if we use a Reichland flesh shade on there first. It just adds to the tonal variety of the colour. Variety, variety, variety. I'm making up words. The tonal variety of the colour. So what we're going to do is just going to do the whole thing in Reichland flesh shade. The gold and the, the shield will get coloured in other colours anyway. So that's fine. I'll get other base colours over there. So we've got some Reichland flesh shade. And all we're going to do is dead simple this layer. Just literally going to put it on there and not think about it so as always use a fairly big brush oh well, one other thing um i swapped brushes after i stopped filming to a base brush a large base brush you'll find painting goes a lot quicker if you use a brush like that it's much faster that's why the large base brushes are called large base brushes large bits but i'm not even using words now so yes get this uh, get this shade on as always move it around you can one brush full will actually cover most of this part probably you don't want it to pull up so make sure you're moving it around if it looks like it's pooling up anywhere just shuffle it about a bit but you can be quite generous we're going to be doing layers over this so it doesn't really matter this is just to give a recess shade for some of the darker areas once all the other painting goes over the top 
this is what you'll be left with with the dark areas i'm also going a little bit underneath under here but not too much because you're not really going to see that once it's actually mounted to the front of the flyer anyway but we'll get it in there anyway and i have to say if you've not got one of these grippy things these citadel grippy things that's designed for uh, it's designed to fit a, a standard figure base and it opens up and you can put your dude on the base and then put him in here and paint him it's actually they're actually really good this is the first chance i've had to use it uh, this is just blue tacked on because it's not on a base but the first chance i've had to use it and i've got to tell you it's really good it's better than a better than a cork but the other figures weren't on bases so i couldn't use this but if you've got a figure on a base get yourself one of these they're only a fiver they're really good this bit expands out and can hold bases of different sizes it's really good if you do get anything pooling up just dry your brush off on your tissue and then suck up the excess with the brush so i'll leave that to dry now for maybe 20 minutes won't take long uh, i might blast it with the hairdryer to speed things up you shouldn't really do that with shades but it's not the end of the world uh, and we will then get on to the next step back in a moment okay so the shade is now dried so the next step is we need to paint in the white of the background of the shield so for that i'm going to use ceramite white which is a based color a base even color so it's a, a bit more opaque it just took me ages to find this because i use this for my white balance to get my white balance set on my phone so i don't keep it with my other paints special oh well so for this i'm going to go in with my windsor and newton brush uh, and i'm going to make sure it's not too thick and i don't want too much on the brush and I don't really want to paint over the other bits. I'm going to be fairly neat now. It doesn't matter if I paint over where the gold's going to go. But I want to paint on the bits where there's no fur or anything else. So I'm going to be reasonably neat. If I do mess up, I can always go over again with the, the Zandri dust and the shade just to tidy it up. But as best I can, I want to get it on the shield itself. And as you can see, it's going to take more than one coat to colour this. Because it's uh, a bit translucent. Even though it's a base colour. Some base colours do take more than one coat. I'm still not going to say it. Okay, so that white's now dried. Now it looks a bit patchy. That's kind of how white works. It's really hard to paint anything with any white, even a base colour. So don't worry too much if it's not the neatest surface in the world. We're going to put a shade over that. So we're going to do our first shade on that now and on the rest of the fur. And that's going to be the Agrax Earth Shades. Uh, now this is to darken the recesses in the fur and also to dirty up that white a little bit and you know what we're going to do we're just going to get it on the brush we're just going to do a nice even coat over the whole thing now what i'm going to try and do is try and avoid the skulls and the bones and just keep it on the fur because this one i want to get as a recess shade for the fur before we do anything else so just the fur and the and the the white area as best i can because the white although it starts off with the same colors the white and the bone sorry is going to look different to the fur just be as neat as i can i've also got to be careful because there are teeth along there as well that you've got to keep an eye out for Okay, so the Agrax is now dried, and to differentiate it even further from when we do the bones later on, we're going to go in with some, that's Agrax uh, shade, not that one, we're going to go in with some Seraphim Sepia shade. This is more of a slightly reddy tone, and again, this just means that, because we're going to use lots of the same colours for all of these, um, so it just means that when we do get to that final mix, the bones and the fur don't all look the same. So this is exactly the same as we've just done, go over all the fur, and but i'm what i'm not going to do is go over the white parts of the shield see how i went over the white part with the agrax earth shade i'm not going to go over that bit this time i'm just i'm going to do it on camera as well i'm just going to go over the fur and this just differentiates the fur from everything else later on again i'm steering clear of the bones bones as best i can Uh, 
Okay, so that's dried nicely, and you can see it's getting a bit of a ready tone to it now. So next we're going to do a little dry brush. Now we're going to use a dry brush for this. We're going to use my base brush that I used earlier on. It's all dry now. Uh, and we're going to go in with a little bit of Ushabti Boon. Ushabti Boon. I love that name. I love that name. Now this is going to be a very, very light dry brush. So I've got almost nothing at all on the brush. I'm just rubbing it off on a bit of tissue now. And I really want to just get some very subtle raised areas really almost nothing at all i'm going to try and avoid the skulls and bones as best i can and i'm going to focus more towards the top half and the outside edge because down here is some pores so i'm just doing a real minimal bit of dry brushing just to pick out the raised edges give it a bit of definition and in fact that's probably about as much as i want to do it really is not much at all just a little bit probably a bit too much there than i planned but it looks fine it's fine it's not the end of the world if you're struggling to stay away from the schools by the way don't worry you can always go over them again with sandry dust and another wash of the right and flesh shade just to go back to take them back to square one but we're going to layer over them anyway so it's not the end of the world i'm just trying to be neat so there we go we're gonna have that tooth there but i can repaint that so there we go, it's a bit brighter there than I thought, so I'll just balance this one out and make this one a bit brighter as well. But that's about as far as I want to go with that dry brush, he says, doing more. So I'm going to get that brush cleaned off, I'm let that dry for a few minutes. And the next bit is back to the Agrax Earth Shade. And if you remember when we did the cloak on the dude, on the dude with the wavy chainsaw. Incidentally, interestingly, I saw a video the other day about how the chainsaw would be a really bad weapon just based on the physics of how a chainsaw would actually work and it turns out yeah it would be a really bad weapon um, i'll go let this dry for a minute and when we come back we'll do some more agrax back in a moment okay so that's dried so now it's time to go back in with the agrax earth shade and what i plan to do is maybe focus down the middle of these legs and down the middle of the back so all i'm going to do is take my brush and just like we did before Except this time I'm not really doing a glaze. I'm not, I've not thinned this down with um, Lamian Medium. I'm just using it neat from the pot. And what I'm doing is I'm going to do a wide swath of the Agrax Earth Shade here like we did before. And then down the middle here. Because that's the middle of the pour there. And then what I'll do is I'll let this dry. And then I'll go in with a second coat and the second coat of course will be thinner it won't go as wide left and right and then go in with a third coat that'll be even thinner still just basically a line and that should hopefully give us some variation i'm doing using it neat because i want to go a bit darker than i did with the pelt on the the back of the figure's cloak uh, i just want to make it a bit different to that so We'll just use it neat. So I've done that bit. I'll let that dry for a minute. Then I'll go back in with another coat, another coat. I'll probably do two or three coats and just get thinner every time to the last one. It's just basically a line down the middle. And we'll see how that comes out. Back in a moment. Okay, so that's done. I did go over with a little dry brush with some Shabti Bone again. Just a tiny amount just to bring back some of the, the fur bits. Uh, and I think it's come out quite nice. So what's next? Before we start doing all the bone and this half of the wolf head, I'm going to do this gold trim purely because some of the gold trim goes underneath this head here. And it's going to be hard to get to once this head is painted. So I'd rather paint the gold trim the base colour and then paint that half of the head. So what I'm going to do is I've got my Retributor Armour. Retributor Armour. I've got paint on my thumb. Fantastic. Uh, I have a little bit of the waters. And I shall quite simply paint it on. You know how this works. So I'm just going to be as neat as I can. I'm going to try not to get any on the fur because that would obviously be sad times. And I'm going to try not to go inside the diamond part because I want that to be a darker brown. I'll put a wash in there in a minute. But So I just really want to pick up this edge. And it's handy if you use the brush edge on. If you can. It's not always possible. So I'm just going to paint this little frame. Thank you. 
Okay, so that's that done. You can see I went over the face a bit here, but that doesn't matter. We're going to paint that bit now. Uh, now this is supposed to be black, but what I'm going to do, as I've done before on other things, is actually go with Eshin Grey first. Where's my Eshin Grey? I put it down somewhere. It's there. Eshin Grey. Uh, and the reason for this is rather than going black and then have to do an edge highlight, I'd rather go in now with Eshin Grey and then I can do something like a Null Oil wash to darken it rather than rather than do a highlight to lighten things, I'll do a, a low light or a wash shade to lighten things. Much easier. Oops, locking the camera, sorry. Okay, with that now painted, uh, you can start to see the detail on the wolf's head and you begin to realise that I don't know what they're thinking with that nose on the on the fleshy side, but I don't think Games Workshop know how dogs work. I don't think they know how dogs actually work. I mean, I know that the space wolves aren't actually wolves or dogs. They're, well, I'm not going to spoil anything. They're not actually, they're not actually canines, but yeah, shh. But um, I don't think they know how dogs or canines work because that's not how the nose works it's got like a horse nose i don't quite understand that anyway enough nonsense what's next next it's a nice simple wash of normal just over the bit we've painted gray and again this is just to give us the, the depth it's like the reverse of the usual way of doing it normally you paint it like, like i say an edge highlight it i suck at edge highlighting so i'd rather do it this way Okay, so the Null Oil is now dried, and you can see it's a lot darker. Yeah, I did about three coats of the Null Oil, so it's come up quite nicely. Uh, so what's next? Well, next we're going to do a little dry brush, a very subtle dry brush. And for that, I've mixed a little tiny bit of Ceramite White into the Eshin Grey that we had earlier. And I've got my little chisely dry brush again. Well, it's not a dry brush, but I'm using it for dry brushing. I'm putting almost no paint on it. I'm taking pretty much most of the paint off, so there's almost nothing left. And very carefully using the brush this way, I'm just going to very gently, do it on camera, very gently run it across and see what happens. Be really careful not to get it anywhere I don't want it to go. Not easy. With a little bit of patience and care under tension you can get a nice dry brush effect I really do suck at edge highlighting which is why I didn't want to do edge highlighting because I know I suck at it I can actually dry brush carefully better than I can edge highlight carefully which sounds really weird because dry brushing is just slapping paint all over the place. Okay, so there we are. That is done. That's going to do me absolutely fine. I'm more than happy with that. Put a little bit more on there just to fade it. So that is done. So we've got a nice hedge highlight on the brow and on the nose, which doesn't make any sense because it looks more like a horse. And around the edge of the ear with the darkness inside the ear just standing up. So that'll do nicely. So that is that done. What's next? Next, I think we will do the bones. So let me go and get all the paints ready and we shall do the bones uh, next. Okay, so next the bones. And if you remember, we did the Zandri dust and then gave it a wash of the Reichland uh, flesh shade. Forgot the name then. Uh, so to do bones, and we're gonna do the teeth the same way. To do bones on the teeth, what you basically need to do is go in with some, that's not the one I wanted, go with some Ushabti bone. Always with the Ushabti bone. I love saying that. I love it. When Duncan says Ushabti bone, I just go all happy inside. He doesn't say it much, you know, often enough as far as I'm concerned. So what we need to do is get our little brush and get some Ushabti bone, get a little bit of water because it's been on the palette for a while. A little bit of water. And all we need to do here is basically, same as when we did... Um, some of the bit that I can't remember what it was. We just want to go over the raised areas and leave the low lights where the shade collected. So let's do our best. I 
Okay, right, so that's the bones base colour down. I did race ahead a little bit and do some extra bits. Uh, obviously the Ushabti bone, Ushabti bone, has gone all over all the skulls and the bones and the claws. Uh, I also, and the teeth sitting around there. I also uh, decided to cave and do a bit of an edge highlight on the wolf's head because it wasn't really standing out. It was a bit, it was a bit just grey and indistinct. So I did an edge highlight around the raised parts. Uh, I decided to paint the eye white and you'll see why I've done that later. Uh, and I also got a little bit of norm oil and just ran it round the edges where all the bits meet the fur, so like the skulls and this diamond thing and the, the the wolf's head, just to put a little bit of a shadow underneath each thing. So it looks like it has some weight. It's pushing the fur down. Do it on camera, dear. Pushing the fur down, so you've got a little bit of a shadow. Uh, did I do anything else? No, I think that's all I did. But yes, you'll see why I painted the eye. I was quite chuffed with that. I just got the brush and was like and did that and it was like yes it worked yes um, i did that off camera because it was really small and fiddly so i couldn't really film it i needed to get up close and personal uh, so that's that done what's the next color the next color we're going to use is white scar uh, this is for just little highlights on the bones now you might be wondering why we don't just use ceramite white white scar is a layer color so it's a bit more transparent than ceramite white we don't want a thick base color we want something slightly transparent and if we thin it ever so slightly i'm just getting some water now thin it ever so slightly we can get a nice transition color and all we're going to do here is just pick out raised edges so for example the real high points so maybe just here like that now it'll look a bit extreme as soon as it goes on but when it's dried after a few minutes it'll be less obvious so we're just going to go around all the real prominent areas like the that bit there above the orbit of the eye down the middle of the nose let me just knock the camera for you because i know you like it when i knock the camera uh, tip of the nose here and again it's an ad advantageous that it's not a base color because we don't need it to be really really stark white we want it to fade slightly so I'll just go around and get all these top bits painted. Do the eyebrows. And the nose. Okay, so that's the bones done, looking very bony. Yes. Uh, I then went over with some. When I'd done all that, I put a little bit extra of the of the white on the claws just to make them stand out a little bit. So looking nice and bony and clawy and toothy now. Uh, next up we need to do the metallic chain. There's a chain here between these skulls that then connects that claw. There's some metal things at the top here that hold it into place. Uh, and we're going to do those with starting off with a lead belcher. Yeah, it's been a lead belcher. You know how this works. So we're just going to paint these bits lead belcher first. Once I've done that, I'll go over them with a wash of null oil. Like you've seen it a million times and i've done it off camera as well yay so you couldn't see what i was doing hooray you've seen it a million times so i won't show you both but yes once i've done this i'll do a wash of null oil okay so that's been done uh, painted all the chains and the bits of metal around the skulls and i also went ahead and painted this bit of string or rope or whatever you want to call it I decided to paint it red so it's just mephiston red uh, all over and then a bit of a, a bit of a bit of uh, evil sun scarlet just on the, the highlights just to give it some some texture now what's next well i have made a decision uh the bones are kind of disappearing into the white of the shield and even once you put the gold on there they're going to fade out a bit so what i'm going to do i've decided to dump the white shield idea and we're going to paint it red so for that i'm just going to go for some mephiston red I like red. I like painting with the red colours. They're really nice. They are the best paints to work with. So I'm just going to basically repaint this red to start with. And I'll try and do it on camera this time. Okay, so that's the red on. Looks a bit more distinct now. The bones stand out a bit. So we're just going to do a quick null oil wash just to darken them down a bit and get some, get some shade into the recesses. 
be very careful not to get it on the bones and other things. Okay, so that's the red shaded. Uh, so what we're going to do next is we still have the gold to do and we have this little rune down here to do. So I'm not going to show you the whole rune, uh, the whole um, gold because we've done it a million times now. So it's just going to go in with some Retributor armor. Retributor armor. And then we'll go over with some Rital Flesh Shade and then go over with the Auric Armor Gold just to highlight the edges. So you've seen that before. So I'll go and get that done. I'll we'll start on the Retributor armor. And we'll get this bit done first. Then we've just got the rune left to do then. So I'll get the Retributor armor on there first. I've got no idea where the camera is. That's why I keep going out of shot. Also, you notice my voice has gone all Barry White today. My cold lasted about 12 hours. But I've still got the voice. Okay, so that's the gold all painted. Now, we're not going to gloss varnish it just yet. We will do a gloss varnish over the gold, as we did on the rest of the model, just to protect it, but more importantly on this particular piece, to uh, make it really, really shiny, because it just really does bring up that shine and get rid of some of the slight brush marks. There are some slight brush marks in there, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, so there's one last thing to do, and that is to paint this rune here. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint the the actual piece of stone but I'm not going to show you how I paint the runic symbol purely because there are bigger ones on the flyer and I can show you on there how I do it so I'm not going to show you the runic symbol but all I'm going to do for the stone for the rune itself is I have some Mechanicus standard grey to start with so we're just going to paint the rune stone with the Mechanicus standard grey Mechanicus standard grey Okay, so that's painted. Now I've added some white scar. No, I tell a lie. I've added some ceramite white to the Mechanicus Standard Grey. And I'm just going to do effectively an edge highlight, really, just round the edges. Okay, so the rune is done. I've painted the glyph. Uh, but again, I'll show that when we do the actual glyphs on the ship. So the last bit to be to do now before we go ahead and gloss is to do the eye. I'm going to do this with the Ammo by MIG AMIG 093 Crystal Red. It's the same stuff I used on the jewels, on the figures, and also uh, on the eyes of the Space Marines. So what we're going to do, I painted the eye in white. So very, very carefully, I'm just going to go over the jewel red, get a bit more on the brush. And if I can, I'm just going to touch it to the eye. If I can get the angle right, hang on. It's nerve-wracking doing this. Slowly, slowly. Oh, my fingers are in the way. <laughs> Let's try that again. It's easy when I can get up close to it. When I'm this far away, it's not that easy. I've got the camera to think of, so. Uh, knocking the camera, there we go. Hmm, let me try it this way. This might be easier. Hang on, let me just stop knocking the camera. That would be really good. Let's try that again. See how hard this actually is. Oh, fingers are in the way again. Damn it. You've got to get your angle just right. There we go. And there we now have beautifully painted red eye. Now that'll be ever so slightly shiny, but not too much. So once it's dried for about half an hour or so, what I can do is go in with some pledge on there. Uh, and just give it a little bit of sparkle. Oh, that was stressful. It's easier when I'm right up close to it. I can see every angle. When I've got a camera in the way, it's not that easy. So that completes the shield, apart from the gloss we're going to put on the uh, gold and the eye. Once that's dry, that completes the shield. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a look at how long this video is actually going to be. 
uh, and then if we've still got loads of time left we'll go back to the the ship just cleaning my brush uh, if it's not we'll wrap it up so let me go and double check everything and I'll see you back in a minute I'm quite proud of that see you back in a minute Okay, so I just double checked. Yeah, I think we're done for this episode. We've got other stuff to do now that's going to take too much time. We've got to do the canopy and that'll be like half an episode at least, if not more. Uh, we've still got to do the metallics, the silver metallics, uh, and we have the motorbike to do, which is going to be an episode all to itself. And other bits and bobs. So I think that's going to do it for this episode. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying it so far. I hope it's given you some good ideas. Uh, it's uh, it's certainly a great deal of fun if you've never tried a Warhammer kit before and you've never really got into brush painting I really do strongly recommend it try the Citadel paints you don't have to try one of their kits but try the Citadel paints they're just the best paint for brush painting I'm having so much fun I couldn't have done anything like this with Tamiya paints or any other kind of paint I just in my experience I couldn't I'm just not as good with other paints they're very forgiving but yes, thank you so much for watching. Uh, as always, don't forget, if you want to join what I think is the best community for model making in the entire universe, okay, I'm biased, I set it up, but uh, go to the Model Makers Boom Hut on Facebook. It's a brilliant community. Uh, it's really friendly. There's no negativity and sniping and snarking. We don't allow it. No don't our bitchiness and rivet counting. Uh, it's really helpful. You can go in, get advice, get tips, show off your stuff. You'll get loads of positive feedback. Um, and you'll make some friends as well because they're all really cool bunch of people in there So do go along to the boom hut and join in we do have giveaways occasionally as well So it's worth joining in uh, and as always uh, if you'd like to help keep this channel going if you'd like to help support it uh, And keep me making these videos and doing what I'm doing do have a think about going to my patreon page patreon.com forward slash model making guru uh, Every little bit helps we go from a dollar onwards every little bit helps it keeps me doing this and it keeps the channel going it helps keeps the lights on and i love my patrons dearly i love everybody dearly but my patrons have a special kind of love Ew, that just doesn't sound right at all does it um as always obviously uh, any mainstream videos like these build videos are released a week early to patrons and then to everybody else a week later uh, and there are other benefits to becoming a patreon supporter so if, you, if you'd like to you don't have to it's completely optional it's completely optional but i'd really love it if you did so go and have a look at least anyway that's going to do us thank you again so much for watching we're getting towards there we're getting towards the end now not quite there but we're getting there i can see the end in sight take care of yourselves go make something awesome go be awesome and until next time adios amoebas <laughs>